raining super hard today. Sounds like the world is ending. So we had to bring little Luna Bear inside. I've got Skyrim ambiance on. Why can't there be real dragons in the world? Hi guys, so today is Saturday night, it's the start of another reading vlog. I'm actually gonna try to basically have tomorrow be like a 24 hour readathon as best as I can and then check back in on Monday. So it's gonna, gonna be a short amount of time here. I have the whole day, I'm hoping to basically do my chores and then read. And literally my husband and I decided to make a chore list because we're 12. Anyway, that's all really boring stuff. We'll get into what I'm reading. Best Surf Cold and Ruin of Kings. So Ruin of Kings is the buddy read for this month. I'm probably going to focus on Best Surf Cold for tomorrow and Monday and then have Ruin of Kings be my focus leading up to next weekend because there will be a live show. It is a buddy read with Jesse from the channel Jesse May. So I'm only roughly 30 pages in, not all that far. And the beginning is a little disorienting because you follow a character who is a prisoner and then they're telling you their story, but then the person who is guarding them in the prison is like, no, no, you're telling your story wrong. Let me tell you your story. So that's kind of interesting. And then you also have some footnotes. That's all I'm really, that's, that's it so far. I'm not far enough in to really have too many opinions. I am hoping that that element of the story does not continue throughout. Generally speaking, I don't love the I'm going to tell you my story kinds of stories. The only time that that's worked for me is Bloodsong by Anthony Ryan, which is fantastic. I loved that book. But otherwise, I, I usually don't like, I don't know, I'm not the biggest fan of that. But switching gears, getting into Best Serve Cold. I don't have the sleeves on either of these because does anybody read their hardbacks with the sleeves on? I'm actually really curious about that. But I am loving this so much, so, so much, unless something terrible happens, meaning like the book's quality drops tremendously. This is going to be a new favorite. I love it so much. So it is a standalone. It takes place in the First Law world. I think a lot of you are pretty familiar with that. But First Law for me, I have some mixed feelings about. Overall, I really enjoyed it. I don't really have anything new to add. I think that Joe Abercrombie's character work is amazing. I love Glockta. I love Logan. Giselle's an idiot. I, <laughs> Pharaoh is a rage monster. I don't have too much to say that isn't pretty much already said by Joe Abercrombie fans, but I was a little underwhelmed with the ending of that one. Everyone said, just wait till you get to his later works. They're even better. So I was really looking forward to discovering if I agreed with that. And I do in the last reading vlog, I had kind of started it, but I wasn't too far in yet. But yeah, roughly 150 pages in. And the characters, I already care about them so much. His character work is amazing, but in the First Law trilogy, it took me a while to care about the characters. And I don't know if he just got even better or if, I, I don't know, maybe I'm just familiar with his writing style. Or maybe it's because the plot is so straightforward in this one that it allowed me to kind of feel like I wasn't as distracted because I know what's going on with the plot so I can focus on the characters more. I don't know what it is, but I care about all of them so much. I care about the main, the main, main character. I cared about them immediately. And then you get Shivers, who I love so much. Monza for me reminds me a little bit of Pharaoh, just a little bit because this character wants revenge, which is somewhat similar in their motivations, I should say. The character themselves is not quite the same. I feel like they're a little more quiet with their anger and Pharaoh is very explosive with hers. But then Shivers reminds me a little bit of Logan. They are both Northmen, but I don't know what it is. I loved Logan in the First Law trilogy. Shivers just currently has my heart. He's just, he, I, I kind of want to tell him, like, you need to walk away now, man. You need to walk away from this woman's desire for revenge because she's really sucking you in. But he also, I don't know, I feel like he's a little bit too easily manipulated, but I feel bad because he's, I feel like he's trying so hard to be a good person. <laughs> I'm loving it so far. I don't know where it's going. I just love, I love it. I think it can be hard to do a really good revenge story, but this one immediately, I'm like, that's right, I want some revenge too. <laughs> and so I really like that element. I've seen some things go wrong, which has presented 
little bit of a moral conundrum, which I always like. I'm just loving it so far. So fingers crossed. I'm hoping to read through the rest of it, like I said, Sunday, Monday, and then maybe a little bit of Ruin of Kings here and there. But I don't, I'm thinking it's just going to be more of me gushing over it. So Luna has an ice cube and we are getting ready to watch some Demon Slayer. Are you excited? Yes. <laughs> it's Monday morning. I was filling up my water bottle for the day. Well, half the day. <laughs> it's very cloudy outside and wet, which is, uh, you know, very unusual for Arizona. So I'm actually really loving how dark and cloudy it is. And then now I have to refill my filter because I'm a really exciting person. Also got to get one of these. It's my, uh, my version of coffee. Can't forget my... Whoa, what was that? I'm trying to show the good people my vitamins, Luna. My vitamins. You want a snacky? Hmm? Do you? They're in the same place as my vitamins. Let's see if we can catch it, okay? Let's try it. Ready? Catch. <laughs> okay. All right, I'll get it for you. There you go. I don't know why I locked it. <laughs> You're not that smart. My ambiance for the day. Nice, cute little mushroom looking house. Definitely so fitting <laughs> for best serve cold. It's a rainy day, huh, Luna Bear? <laughs> Did it wake you up? What is all that, huh? We so rarely get rain like this. So remember <laughs> when I started this vlog, I said that unless something happens that this should be a new favorite and I thought I was just going to end up gushing about the book. Things changed. <laughs> I'm not, I didn't hate the book, but it's, mm, I might have to sit with it for a little bit. It is Monday. I just finished it today, but there's some plot elements that I found slightly disappointing. So I'll talk about the pros first and I'll try to keep this pretty brief because I would like to do an in-depth review for this one, but I thought that the characterization was wonderful as usual for the most part. I'll mention what I didn't love in the cons section, but I really loved Monza as a character and I actually did enjoy, there's a character named Morvir who initially I thought was insufferable and then there were moments where then I felt really bad for them and I just wanted them to be friends with everybody. And then later I found them frustrating again. And I really appreciate that Joe Abercrombie has a way of doing that with characters where you're like, ugh. And then you find out more about them and you're like, well, dang it. <laughs> I found Casca to be a super fascinating character that I ended up, I don't know, that character may have been ultimately one of my favorites, favorites of the whole book. And I loved initially shivers. <laughs> I feel like if you've read it, then what you heard me say at the beginning of the vlog, you're probably like, uh-oh. <laughs> it's not a matter of me thinking the book is terrible or anything. It's just that there's a few things that Abercrombie did that I feel maybe he also did in First Law because I have mixed feelings about First Law as well, despite I would say overall I really enjoyed it, but I do have those couple things and I thought that those would be 
erased, essentially. I thought I was getting everything I wanted in this one, and I still found a couple of things. So I'll keep going with the pros, though. I was always quite engaged up until 400 and something pages. It doesn't look it, but this book is actually, it's quite slim, but it's over 600 pages, at least this copy is. So it's not a short book, but most of it I was extremely en engaged with. And then there was a certain point where I kind of feel like we started to focus in on a few things that I just didn't care about as much, some threads that I got expanded on that I was like, oh, I kind of want to go back to it being slightly smaller in scope because I feel like that works really well for revenge plots. So again, subjective thing, not quality or anything. But I also felt like the book was quite humorous in a lot of places. There were quite a few times that I laughed out loud while I was reading it. So this book did a lot of things really well. Like I said, the revenge element, it can be tricky to do a revenge story well because the typical tropes that you get of, oh, they're gonna go down this dark path of revenge and then realize it's not even worth it, that whole thing. Or you have to really get the reader on board and make the reader feel like it's worth it. Otherwise, you're like, what's the point of all this? And I definitely felt like he had me rooting for the character in typical Abercrombie fashion. I could see that we weren't doing very good things, but I still was kind of rooting for them anyway. There were some elements to it. Like I said, the f I don't know, somewhere around 450-ish uh, that I was a little bit not pleased with as far as the plot goes. There's just some things that Abercrombie does that you know how some authors or even just movies, video games, there's almost fan service. They just give you what they know you want and it can be kind of disappointing. I feel like Abercrombie does the opposite where he almost gives you exactly what you don't want. He sets you up to be like, you think this is what's happening? Just kidding. I just shattered your hopes and dreams for these characters. It almost sort of becomes predictable a little bit because you know, you're like, I bet he's gonna make the thing happen that you don't want to have happen. And then that kind of is what ends up happening. It feels like a little edgy for the sake of it. There was one main reveal toward the end of the book that I wasn't expecting and I really enjoyed that. And there were a couple of outcomes that I thought were pretty clever or I just liked the direction they went in. So it wasn't totally ruined. Also, and this is a minor thing, but this has happened twice now. So in the first Law Trilogy, when I reviewed that, I mentioned that there were times where characters would get quite bad injuries and then it almost felt like we forgot about those injuries or it turns out they weren't as bad as they seem to be. So if I'm remembering correctly, there's a character in First Law that gets like stabbed through the face. They get stabbed through their cheek. And then I remember saying in my review that this happened and a couple people were like, oh, well, it's implied maybe possibly that character just heals quickly because maybe there's more going on with that, that, that kind of thing. And I don't know if that's necessarily true. I was like, okay, maybe, maybe that's what's going on. But here, definitely not what's going on. And there's a part where the character gets stabbed through, it's always stabbed through something. <laughs> they get stabbed through the hand and then it goes into their shoulders. So their hand is like pinned like this. And then that injury doesn't really seem to be that big of a deal later. It's not really referenced much. And I feel like they don't even seem like it's that that bad. I don't know. I feel like that's kind of a big deal to have that happen. And it makes it so that when there are other injuries that are severe, I don't know. It's like, okay, well, this one's severe and it almost feels like it's severe for plot. Whereas this one happens more for like shock of the moment in the fight scene. But then if it doesn't have a lasting effect, it makes me care less about your fight scenes or it makes me feel like, like I said, like the other injuries are more plot things. I know I'm being super picky, but just giving you some honest thoughts here. I feel like that's not the first time that one of his characters has gotten a pretty intense injury and then it's not been really addressed much after. Overall, I really enjoyed my time with this book. There was that toward the end chunk where I definitely wish certain things had gone a different direction, but ultimately I would say a, a quite good revenge story. I'm now going to be reading a little bit more of Ruin of Kings just to give you a little update from the last reading vlog. I did finish Hall of Smoke. I have a dedicated review up for that one if you are interested. And then I'm going to be starting Mask of Mirrors, which is another anticipated release of mine that came out this month in January. So I'm gonna pick that one up and I have the audiobook now. I have an arc of it, but it did already come out 
So <laughs> I'm hoping to try and read as much as I can tonight of that one, and then maybe also tomorrow, and then maybe pick it up. The book of Also Bold and Deadly comes out <laughs> tomorrow, and that is definitely one that I want to read. It's a YA fantasy. And then if I get through most of Mask of Mirrors or all of Mask of Mirrors between today and tomorrow and really enjoy it, then maybe I can pick that one up too. We'll see. But anyway, thanks for joining me on this silly little reading vlog. It's actually raining again right now. It's been a very rainy weekend for us here in Arizona. Let me know how your weather is because I feel like most of this vlog has been like, oh, are you an adult? Because I'm trying to be. <laughs> also, sad news, the lizard was dead. The little lizard was not alive. We came back from our walk. It was in the exact same spot and it had been hours and I was like, oh no, I think it's dead. We took a piece of paper and we tried to scoot it and it just, it, 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 it wasn't alive. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. Sorry to end on a depressing note. Have a great rest of your day and uh, I'll see you guys later. Bye.